Uh, let's shift gears a second okay. here. Deep fakes. I think this might become a problem. And I don't know how, I'm, I'm guessing you're kind of like, I have your finger on the pulse of it a little bit. A it little feels bit. like they're starting to come out, like deep audio fakes yeah. are already pretty damn good. You have enough like audio content. So for us podcasters, it's gonna be real easy to like take our voice, yep. match the voice, match the inflection, and get us to say whatever the fuck you want. Right. And it's gonna be almost indistinguishable, if not indistinguishable. I Inevitably think. indistinguishable at some point. Right. And then, you know, with video technology, obviously we've seen it in the movies, et cetera, but it's starting to get better and more accessible. We're going to have deep fake videos that match our voice with us doing shit on video. Oh, yep. This is going to be chaos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. What do you think about it? Well, you know, if you fucked around with the text to art, uh, if you if you fucked around with the text to art like Dolly Two or mm -mm. Mid Journey or any of that stuff, so um, yeah, you can basically just like tell this like neural network like, hey, I want to like, can you do uh, uh, just describe anything like? Uh, uh, unfortunately, it does censor sex stuff right now, but like y theoretically, if the censor was off, you could be like, I want to see. Um, can you draw, you don't even have to say, can you, uh, you just type in like, um, Godzilla eating a chicken wing out of Bigfoot's ass. And within a minute, it won't just like, and you can also say in the style of Monet. So like in a minute, less than a minute, it will do four like pictures depicting what you said Whoa. in the style of these famous artists. And it does it so fast. There's a lot of controversy surrounding it because it's the neural network seems to be like recombining images from um, like a Google image search or something, but doing it in this clever way, like a kind of collage that uh -huh. creates its own work of art. And people are like, isn't that kind of like theft? Like, isn't you're just Some taking other art. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless, it does it and it does it instantly. And so the the processing power isn't there yet for it to animate it. So to, to get to the point where someone could say, um, uh, generate a, a podcast between Aubrey Marcus and Godzilla, and he's asking him, what's it like to eat a chicken wing out of Bigfoot's <laughs> ass? And, and we're not there yet, but it's coming. It's yeah. coming. That yeah. will happen. It's inevitably going to happen. It's going to like transform the way, like right now, you want to watch a movie, you go on Amazon and you look for a movie that's going to scratch the itch. Like maybe you want a drama, whatever. Maybe you're like wanting to, you know, to, some cool thing to watch with your partner, whatever. And you, you, you fight over it or it sucks. But theoretically, because it doesn't exist yet, it's all based on processing speed. And we do know that there is a way to like predict pro how processing speed, how computers are just getting faster and yeah, faster. They're going quantum. Yes. So eventually it's going to be like, you know, hey, I want to I want to see a movie. I want to see a movie with, you know, about like Bigfoot and Godzilla. It's like Call Me By Your Name meets The Shining, you know, but make it like Alfred Hitchcock directed it. I want some suspense and boom, that's the movie it's going to make. Now, I we're not there yet. Again, it's processing mm -hmm. speed. But so the deep fake thing is the very tip of the iceberg that's getting us closer to um, uh, what McKenna predicted as like pre-singularity, which is the amount of time between what you want and its existence in the universe is collapsing. So mm. the, the, right now you want to like make a movie with Godzilla and Bigfoot, man, that's a big budget movie. Probably yeah, it's going to take a million dollars. Yeah. yeah going to take a few years, not to mention all the licensing and shit, but like, boom, all of a sudden it's there. It's just there. Now you have it. So this is going to get spectacularly bizarre when you've lost a parent and you oh, ask man. the thing to put you in a VR room with your mom and it does a personality scan of your mom from her like Google 
like all the data they collected on Google or in Facebook or whatever, and suddenly you're hanging out with your mom who is being animated by like whatever the next iteration of Lambda is that Google is working on the sentient AI, and now it's not it's not like a chat bot. It's stuttering and like, oh, good to see you, Bree. Yeah. It's going to be like, I'm so glad you're here. There, I wasn't in my body. This is just channeling my body. You know, this is why personality is infinite. And this is one aspect of who I was. And I'm so glad to see you. So that's coming. And it's going to fuck up the entire grieving process. Also, there's going to be all these like ethical issues about. Uh, so I guess my mom is owned by Mark Zuckerberg now and <laughs> his, his server. You know what I mean? And so, 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 so that is where it's headed. And then if you want to take it one step past that i'm glad you asked me the question this is like a nitrous oxide epiphany i had like (sighs) i can't believe i just took a hit of my stupid (laughs) vape after saying nitrous oxide epiphany (laughs) i'm done after this i'm going to india you'll never see me again the the uh the so i real i had this like realization regarding um, data and uh, d- the permanence of data. Um, the idea the, of the possibility, okay, like, you know, right now we've got this incredible telescope, the James Webb telescope. It can't, it's looking out into the universe, doing all kinds of awesome things. It can detect water molecules in the atmosphere of planets so fucking far away, so impossibly far away. And it can tell, oh, there's this much water in the atmosphere. Now, imagine that thing, except it isn't just scanning for water particles. Imagine if it could scan for like organic life. Like just imagine if the thing was turned on Mm. our planet Mm. and it could peer into the dirt and scan the dirt for bone fragments. And then imagine from those bone fragments, it could... um, simulate what the creature the bone fragments were attached to was like and based on the vegetative matter and the soil around the bone fragment it could actually simulate the way that thing might walk or hunt or be and then imagine that from these simulations it could actually bring a being to life it could actually bring what its personality might have been like to life and and again i'm we're talking technology that God God knows how far away it may be. But uh, suddenly, there's this possibility that via whatever this technology might be, we could scan a planet, simulate the beings that lived at various time periods in that planet, resurrect them, use artificial intelligence and this same insane technology that like Mid Midjourney and uh, Dali is using to literally create a simulated version of that planet at any given time frame indistinguishable from reality right at that point you have like a weird time machine slash resurrection device that's mm. sort of bringing things back to life with impossible perfect clarity on every level so that they think they're alive you know what i mean mm. so uh, anyway i'm on nitrous oxide when i'm thinking this and then i realize oh it probably already did it like it's that's probably what's happening right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We're, we are, we are like being scanned, but the scan itself is what's giving us our consciousness. This is the mind of God everyone talks about. Right. The, the eye of God, the eye at the top of the pyramid on the right. dollar bill, the all seeing eye, the resurrective quality in the universe. It's a super intelligence that looks back into time and just the act of looking brings everything back to life that was there. Uh, and anyway, nitrous oxide, it's just, if you take this kind of technology and you um, and, and, and look at where we're already at with it, and then apply the uh, infinite universe theory or whatever, 13.7 billion years old theory to it, then it's probably other technologies have already done it. And if they've already done it, then the odds of us being in the, you know, uh, uh, the first version of reality, or even if that even is a thing, are pretty slim. Well, okay. So there's so many fucking things that I haven't thought about this nearly to the extent that you have. And I'm so glad I asked you this question because it's opening up so many things. One, 
I also, you remember when Paul Selig, you asked Paul Selig about AI. Yeah. Do you remember when you asked him that question? I do. And he was like, basically the guides came through and they were saying, all of this is underestimating, like AI creating actual sentience. And they were like, all of this is underestimating something that is irreducible, undying, unquantifiable, yeah. and like unreproducible, which is human consciousness yeah. abiding in the divine. So I think there is a, a premise that we can, we can actually create genuine sentience that I'm not sure I agree with, and I tend to veer towards Paul Selig, but that remains to be seen. Certainly by the algorithm, it looks like we're heading towards that thing, but I still have my doubts. So I just want to put that caveat out there as a potential, okay. like, you know, devil's advocate of there may be something that we're missing that we don't see that's involved yeah. in sentience that yeah. is irreducible, that can't be created in the binary way that we're using computing now or even in the quant way. Okay. That said, l opening up some of these other fucking wormholes is fucking crazy because that would mean that if you wanted to have a kind of replication of some dialogue Oh, fucking A. First of all, your family, of course, for the sentimentality of it, but also take someone. You mentioned, you referenced Jordan Peterson. He is somebody that so many people look up to for advice. Like, and, and imagine if he was your dad or your uncle or somebody like that, and you could talk to him and ask him any question. Well, if they fed in every podcast he's ever done, every speech he's yeah. ever done, every lecture he's ever done, you could have your own Jordan Peterson yeah. fucking bot yeah that you could just talk to about anything and everything in life or name your person could be guru dev or it could be yeah. fucking rogan or you or me or whoever whoever right. the fuck you want yeah and then you could just have that interaction with them and it be i mean it wouldn't be actually them but it would be it would look and feel and i mean people are going to be falling in love with these things they're going to be yeah. it's going to change the whole it's going to change the whole world yeah that's right yeah, it is, and 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 and, and all, you know, the, to address that idea of like the soul particulate or, or whatever that may be that comes up a lot when it, with AI mm -hmm. and sentience or whatever, it's like, yeah, you can't make the wind, but you can make a sail that catches the wind. Right. And if there is one mind or consciousness is not a byproduct of yeah. human neurology, then you theoretically could create like some. A, a way to catch that sort of that's a good way to look at universal it. consciousness that's so that cool. it embodies an ai or comes into it you just an think AI. of that that was kind of that was pretty brilliant i thought about it a long time ago <laughs> when i was like kicking around the idea of like oh yeah maybe the way we think the reason like people are having such a difficult time um uh believing that ai can be sentient is because of this sort of like uh the notion of the embodied soul a, a kind of like uh and you know like it's a fun to like kick around the idea of like well what is a soul and how does that even work or was it a quantum particle like where does a soul reside and how does it everywhere and nowhere shift from yeah right it's probably not in the body if it's not in the body then it's like a wind or something or some kind of yeah. uh um energy or i don't know like some 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 something that is we're that's being channeled through our nervous systems in a way that it gives the impression that it exists uniquely in each person. Well, I think that is the body, actually. That is the unique prism. And that's why I think we won't be able to adequately have a mind that really, really works. I mean, I think we can use this kind of deep fakes technology, like you said, to represent uh, kind of what a mind could be, but to have an actual mind that res really resembles a person and can actually think, you know, not derivatively from something else that has yeah. been thought from someone with a body. Like you will need a body because so much of our thoughts are generated from our body. Like the intelligence of our microorganisms and our skin and our flesh. And as you talked about with your heart example, right? The stored memories and accumulation of interaction with the environment. So I think actually the development of an Android that it can actually sense to a similar degree and feel to a similar degree, at least at least pleasure and pain in the body is going to be necessary to really perfect this mind thing. So I yeah. think we would need full robe, like full Westworld type of being. Right. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, that's going to get, that's, I mean, again, like that's where we're running into the other aspect of this damn technology is it's going to 
cause us to sort of redefine our conceptualization of space, spatiality, reality itself. So that the again, we we are obvious. We're human beings. Like we, when we want to, like I, uh, the Prabhupada, the founder of the Hare Krishnas, used to roast astronauts because he's he thought it was so funny that that you know people thought it was like advanced to put their bodies into a can and throw that thing out into space to try to get the body from point A to point B because <laughs> you thought that was funny because from that perspective the you're not your body it's just a, a thing that your soul's hanging out in and like his point was like they figured out a long time ago how to like uh astrally project and go to other planets and go to the god realms and do all this stuff and the whole like materialist idea of like moving your body around like that is insane mm -hmm. and i think with virtual reality and um increasingly uh non-invasive ways of stimulating the brain to produce uh various sensations uh we're gonna run into oh, a, yeah we're gonna get real good at that transcranial direct stimulation and yeah you know that and then the the transhumanist uh, idea uh, is going to start becoming like a, a, a something that isn't just in sci-fi books and now it's it's like it's going to cause us to have to redefine a lot of things about what it means to be human and 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 we will right now with like the um lambda at google and like people like freaking out over that and saying no it can't be a person no it can't be sentient no it can't have a soul all that stuff i think wrapped up in that is um uh all of us want to be special we want you we, we want we don't want we want this idea of like well i've got a soul oh mm. like every fucking comedian you know like is looking at ai and they're like it'll never be funny it can't learn to tell mm. jokes. Oh, fuck you. It's going to be funny. It's going to be a million times funnier than all of us. And it's like, and we're going to. You gonna, think you think so? I, I sure as fuck hope so. I'm sick of writing jokes. The idea that I could like <laughs> get an AI to like blast out like seven hours of like perfect comedy, it's a dream come true. What I don't like is that AI deep faking me and like making its own YouTube channel where people are like, you know, Duncan, you're okay. But your fucking AI is hilarious. <laughs> like, we really like that guy. He's great. That's going to suck. But yeah, man, I, I think that um, uh, the, the, what's coming is so incredibly confusing because it's going to all of the things that we think of as fundamental to, to human life the death process. Once someone's dead, they're dead forever. All of these things that are fundamental to us, in the same way it was fundamental that you couldn't fly. It was fun, the idea that you could like get in a fucking plane, fly around the planet, that was for a long time, that, that was an impossibility. It was fundamental to the human experience to walk around if you yeah. wanted to get a a view of the wherever you're at you had to climb up on a high fucking place and look out the idea of getting in a thing and flying around forget it 